Hello and welcome to My String Coach. Today I'm going to talk to you string teachers about solemnization. Solemnization is simply a fancy word that just means the stuff that comes out of your mouth when you sing to kids with the intention of teaching them something. If you look solemnization up on the internet, you're going to find, like much on the internet, kind of part of the truth, but not the whole truth. And what you'll see is they'll say syllables that are used to teach notes. And then an example, it will be solfege. Okay, that's part of the truth, right? And, and solfege definitely is a solemnization system. But think about a note. What is a note? A note is both pitch, like we just talked about, and rhythm. There are two pieces to that. So you can't just um, think that uh, uh, solfege is going to help with rhythm. So that's only part of the note, <clears throat> only half of the note. So there are systems out there to teach specifically rhythm. And there are, like Soulfish, systems out there to teach pitch. And so I, I'm going to work with you or give you some ideas about both. But before I do that, I, I want to talk about the idea of a tool. Solidization is a tool. Um, and so when I share with you, eventually I'm going to share with you what I think works really, really well. Just keep in mind, we're talking about a tool that I like. Um, my dad has all kinds of tools, lots and lots of tools. And, um, and growing up, uh, he, he had what he needed for work. And now <laughs> he told me before, he says, I can't, I can't pass up a cheap tool. And it's true. He, he buys all kinds of stuff. And I'll go through his his barn and it's full of tools and I'll say, what in the world is this for? And he'll, he'll know. He'll say, oh, well, that's for blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, have you ever used it? He says, well, no, but if I need to, I've got one. And, and it just cracks me up. Um, and that's true, right? So sometimes you'll look at a tool and you'll think, I don't think I will ever use it. Well, fine, then don't use it if it doesn't work for you. But you might try. You might, you might see, you say, hey, I think this will work really, really well. <clears throat> That's the whole point of a tool, right? We all have different experiences. We all have different ideas about things. Some work great for us. Others don't work so, so great for us. And so I'm actually going to share two tools that you uh, maybe have heard of or never have heard of. And I, I, I'm going to talk about the merits of them. And hopefully you will say, hey, I would like to try that. And if it works great for you, then I am well pleased. OK, so I'm going to talk to you about a pitch system with using note names. And then I'm going to talk to you about a rhythm system of Takadimi. When that is over, then we're going to spend some time talking a little bit about the importance of note names versus numbers. And then I'm going to talk to you uh, about babbling, the importance of babbling with kids. And uh, then we will, uh, we'll, I'll show you an example of uh, kind of babbling and figuring something out uh, that you uh, might want to just try on your own, just to see if you like the two tools that I've been talking about. Now, before I jump into the two different tools, I want to talk to you about what is, what is it that you are doing. Think about your job. All right, and it doesn't matter if you're middle school or high school, it doesn't matter if you're orchestra, band, choir, general music, think about your job. What is it? What is the ultimate goal that you have for kids? And some might say so that they uh, will enjoy music when they grow up. <clears throat> True. How will they enjoy music <clears throat> when they're grown up? Think about that. Um, well, they know a few things. Fabulous, I'm glad they know a few things. What do you mean by that? My argument for you is something to consider is that our main job is to teach music literacy. Think about this. Music literacy. Think about uh, being an adult and just reading. Think of the value of being able to read, right? Uh, j just in society in general. <clears throat> if you want kids to enjoy music, think about that. They can hear music and, and they know what's going on. Because they have, uh, they have both sides to a literacy coin. That would be one. And then the other one is that they can actually look at music and hear in their head what's happening. And that would be audiation. Thank you, Dr. Gordon. So let me rephrase it this way. How cool would it be? Just think about this. How cool would it be if you put music on a stand and the first thing the kids do is start singing the line and putting, putting it in their ear, rather than pulling an instrument and start sawing away at it. Just think about that, just for a moment. Think about how cool that is if you could do that. 
Many of you probably do, and because you've been trained and you don't even really think twice about it. But what, what, what a cool thing for the kids. That's audiating, right? That's reading. Reading is not this, and literacy is not this. Please listen to me. To be able to say third line is a B on the treble clef, uh, the second space is an A, fourth line is a D, that spells the word bad. Oh, I'm, I'm literate. I can read music. Not really. That's a very small piece of what's going on. You can read music when you see B-A-D and when you sing B-A-D in your head. That's real literacy. And again, and in a way, that's only just part of it. So imagine if the kids could do that. Now, the other side of that coin is that uh, they can hear stuff. And they can dictate it. How cool would that be? That would be just like taking notes in, the, in a class. right? They're, they're hearing stuff and they're writing it down. When I say, hey, this is important. <laughs> right, we're getting ready for finals here. I'm going to say, hey, this is important. Why are you not writing this stuff down? You know, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm starting to write it down. You know, Word for word, some of the stuff that I'm saying. Because you're going to see it again. right? There, there, there's some... Uh, some immediacy there for some of them, but right? That's, that's dictation. What about music? Wouldn't that be cool? That if, that if the kids could hear stuff and they could just write it down, that is real, real literacy. And that is, I'm going to argue your main job. Something else I want you to think about is this concept of, of, uh, um, sound before symbol, right? Um, I, I have reworded that in my head to say, I want to give kids the experience first before they really uh, plug into their intellect. And so part of that experience is singing and, and being able to sing out uh, rhythms and pitches to experience it first before they start really thinking about how that works. I think there's, there's something really important piece of that. And I think that's something that we kind of miss with kids. Have experience and then let's do the, then let's really think about it. Uh, and this, uh, I will bring this up later when I start talking about babbling, giving kids the opportunity to experience the music and, and experience it through singing. Now, here's another thing. Uh, some people, instrumentals especially, well, why do I have to sing? Singing is more closely related to your ear, to your understanding, to audiation than your instrument is. And I, I will argue that with you all day long. And here's why. I've had this experience. I have watched my kids have this experience where have you got the kiddo that loves to, to go ahead in the book, <laughs> right? I've got two right now uh, privately that, uh, you know, I'll come in, I'll, I'll turn the page and they'll say, I've already looked at this because <laughs> they're always looking ahead. And of course, that's awesome. I wouldn't ever discourage that. Um, but sometimes when they look ahead, they, they, um, are not they're not experiencing it with me and so they learned it a little bit wrong and i'll say okay um well great but listen it's it's really this way uh, and i do this in my uh in my college class <clears throat> my my 100 students my intro to music ed uh great kids very first day though i have to tell them i say look i don't know i don't know you yet i have a good guess based on my experience that you sorry, are not as musically literate as you think you are. And I know that sounds harsh. I totally get it. And I, I don't say it in a harsh way. And I, I, I'm not trying to shame anybody. I just want you to understand, if, if you can latch on to this idea, uh, and then you, you have half a chance of really helping yourself become musically literate so that you can actually teach music literacy. This is really, really important. And I prove it to them by putting some music on, on the uh, overhead, give them the starting pitch, and I'll say, start singing that. And, of course, choral kiddos, um, bam, they, they have no problems. This is something they've been practicing. They, they can get going. And then my instrumental people are, are listening. They're musically illiterate, aren't they? They're listening and they're cueing off and, and they're imitating what they're hearing rather than actually looking at it and reading. And even with my choral kiddos, so, some of them, not all of them, some of them have, have some rhythm issues. And some of them also, and, and, well, I do this. Uh, I, I, <laughs> they go along and I'll say, stop. Sorry, that's not right. You know, what do you mean that's not right? My, my choral kiddos is in, in particular. I'll say, well, let's look at this very carefully. And they'll sing it again. Say, nope, that's not right. And then they don't know what's going on. And then um, 
I will either sing it or play it on the piano for them because I actually wrote it in minor, not in major, and they just assume that it's in major rather than actually reading it. See? And so, you know, I listen, I, the, music literacy is very, very important. And I, I want you to be musically literate so that when you teach, you're helping kiddos become musically literate. So what does that mean? Have the experience. Let's learn how to have the experience first and then let's engage our brains about what uh, that experience is and what that means. Okay, so back to the two tools that I like, right, of, of solemnization. And the first one I'm going to talk about is Takadimi, and then the second one are note names. Uh, so Takadimi. Now, some of you know what this is. Some of you maybe never have heard of it. I did not grow up with this. I grew up with a counting system. One and two and one and a two and one and a two. That, right? I grew up with this counting system, just like many, many, many of you did. Nothing wrong with a counting system. I think Takadimi is better. And when I, I still work with kiddos, uh, I have a youth orchestra program, and when I work with the, the little ones especially, I make myself do Takadimi. Now, when I'm working with the older kids in the YSO, you know, what naturally comes out of me is the counting system, okay? But with the little kids, I really do my best for Takadimi, and you might say why. T uh, two things. Uh, th the main reason is that Takadimi sounds like rhythm is. Uh, that sounds like Forrest Gump. Takatimi sounds like rhythm is. What do I mean by that? Well, let's think about this. If I ask you to think about the Mona Lisa, bam, your, your brain, you know, however you think about it, you've got a picture of the Mona Lisa. That's what it looks like for you. It's in your head. It's a snapshot. You can just go right to it. Might not be terribly accurate, but it'll be pretty close, won't it? Because you've seen it. If I ask you to think about Ode to Joy, there's no snapshot. You can't just, oh, there it is, Ode to Joy. It has to happen in time and space. Why? Because music has rhythm. Rhythm can only be experienced, you can only do music through rhythm, through time and space. It's really something unique about music. It's super cool. Time and space. Well, what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> What I like about Takadimi is it sounds like rhythm is. So uh, rhythm ha should have the beginning of a note with a consonant sounds, what Takadimi does, and then it fills the space, the rhythm and time, with a vowel, right? Takadimi. So Takadimi is how you would say four notes within a beat. The other thing that Takadimi is really good about is this emphasis about a beat and how I'm going to divide it. I love this. Yeah, it, right? Simple meters, uh, twos are divis divisible of twos or threes, right? Compound meters. And so Takadim is really good about that. Just zeroing in on a beat. What does it do to fill a beat worth of music? And so uh, the constant, the vowel. So Takadimi, 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 right? You have a very clear consonant sound with a very clear vowel. Uh, as a young teacher, I love my Dr. B, all right? And if you're a former student, I know some of you like to watch these, <laughs> you will remember Dr. B, right? And I like blasting the, um, the actual uh, voices. One, two, three, four. That's exactly what it sounds like. It, it is. It's a metronome. It's just going click, click. It's doing that on purpose. Uh, and great. I lived in a community that had some wonderful Suzuki teachers. And I had batches of kids who could flat out play. How fortunate was I? <laughs> the, uh, the problem with my Dr. B is, is um, these students were very good musicians, very good at imitating what they're listening to. So when I was running scales, you know, they're, they're, they're chopping notes like crazy, being very articulate because they're making their sound match the Dr. B. And I had to work really hard on, no, that's just the beginning of it. I, I want you to... Ta, ta, it's not ta, 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 it's ta, ta. I want you to fill the beat. It's one of the reasons I really like Takadimi with a bow. Because this idea of you start the note and, you know, a real clean start, little collé, a little bit of, little bit of uh, pronating to the bow. You start it, but then you draw the bow, right, with a vowel. And I just, again, super, super smart way of doing that. And they divide into twos and into threes. 
Takida, 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 Takadimi, Takadimi, Ta di, Ta di, those are eighth notes, and Ta, 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 right? You won't say Ta, 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 right? You could draw one, one, kind of, two, three, four, one, but <laughs> I don't think very many of us count that way, do we? Anyway, I just, again, I, I think the merits of that are well, well worth considering. And uh, especially when you're really helping kids understand rhythm and helping them understand how a beat is divided. So that is uh, Takadivi. Okay, so now I want to talk about the merits of note names. Now, I don't do solfege. I didn't grow up with solfege uh, as an instrumentalist. And unfortunately, it was never in a choir. I never had to learn it. Um, I have to teach it now because uh, in the school setting that I'm in, and so and it's fine. It's a great system, like uh, everything. But uh, for for strings, I, there's so much value in saying the actual note, and and you showing me on your instrument where that actual note is. Okay, uh, you know I. I uh, was in a, a camp. I taught in a, a camp in Germany every other summer for 20 years. And I loved watching my French teachers sing the lines to the kids. And they, they were both were woodwind teachers, and they're singing. And when they sing uh, Do, Re, Mi, they're singing note names. That's their note names, right? Do is uh, C, Re is D. That's what they're doing. Uh, and I, I just I'll, always marveled at them, like, wow, they were spot on, and it's, it was really, really cool. <clears throat> well, for me, I don't want to change dough all the time. We use a mo movable dough. I don't want to do fixed, because uh, very few people do fixed, and it's just not really part of our culture. I mean, I want to do note names, but I got a problem with note names. I've had a problem for years with note names, and that is, when I say the sharps and the flats, it does not sound like the rhythm. Right? So let's take our favorite song. You guys watch a bunch of my videos. You've seen this. Hot Cross Buns. Here we go. <laughs> right? And we've got um, F sharp, E, D, right? And F sharp, it's this little fast. And even if I say it fast, I've still got this two little, two little syllables to do F sharp. All right? And that is not rhythm. So then you say uh, F, E, D. I was doing that for a while, but it was driving me crazy because it's not F. It's F sharp, and I couldn't figure out a way of uh, dealing with it. So I was doing, um, for a while, I was doing solfege at the very, very beginning, but then I, I gave it up after a while. I didn't really stick with it like I should have. Uh, but two summers ago, I'm working with a young man. He's trying the violin. Uh, he's been playing in a system for a little while, and his, his mom over the summer wanted him to have some lessons to see if there's something he really wanted him to pursue. So she's in the chair next to me, and I've got him right next to me in this very room. And uh, I'm looking at him, and I'm putting stuff in there, and he just starts singing, right? He's singing stuff. And I'm looking at that, and I'm like, you know, he doesn't necessarily associate a note name with what he's singing, but he knows that that sound in his ear belongs to second line belongs to first base, belongs to below the staff. It was it was remarkable. And I didn't want to go down solfege because I didn't want to teach him another system. When he sees that 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 D below the staff, he already knows the sound of it. I just have to associate D with that. It, it was how easy is this when kids can do that before they even come to you. And so all of that to say, I still it's like when I get to F sharp and I don't know, got struck with lightning or something at that very, very moment. But it, it, I went, I looked at him and went, hey, do you want to learn some German? And he very, very excited. Yeah, I want to learn some German. And I'll tell you what, rather than singing F sharp, because it's the wrong rhythm, we're going to sing fis in German. F sharp is fis. It's one sound. And so fis, E, D, and Bam, it was like a light. And then he just started singing like crazy. So fis is F sharp. And then, of course, D major, right? Your very first key that we teach. Sis is C sharp. And there we go. Yeah, my, my problem was fixed. And I, I had the rest of the summer I'm experimenting with him. And uh, we liked it. So I teach uh, young uh, teachers who want to be teachers. And they work in our youth orchestra program. And they do all the different levels. And I said, give this a try. We've been doing this for two years now. 
And, and, and my students love it. They love teaching that way, and, and, and they're doing more singing than they probably ever have done. Uh, I, know, I know for a fact some of them are doing more singing than they ever did when they were younger. And they like it, and I like it. It's a tool. It's working really, 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 really well for us. So you might think, well, what are they all? Well, okay, so mostly middle school, right? So I really just get yourselves up to four sharps. I don't think too many people are singing B sharps and all that. And by the way, if you know German or if you are German, forgive me. Totally forgive me. I, this is not exactly right. And I know it's not right. Because I am very aware <clears throat> that uh, you have an H. Okay. Uh, do you see this little picture here? Isn't that cool? Uh, the, the German system has an, has an H in it well, in Scandinavian and all of that. And if you are totally blown away by that, I'll see if I can find a great video to explain it. And I'll put it in the show notes. And when they say B, it's not B, it's actually B flat. And so, and, and I totally know that. So uh, I taught in Germany for a couple of years. And, and so the, the idea is that, yes, this is German, but it's, First of all, I'm not pronouncing everything exactly right. I'm trying, but it's mostly, uh, uh, we like to say Jerlish, right? It's, it's a mixture of German and English, and it's, it's a system, it's a tool. It's kind of like having a tool and tinkering with it to make it work for yourself, and you would never sell it, and people might look at it and say, what is that? I say, well, it's, it's Jerlish, okay? All right, so here we go. What are they? Well, F sharp is fis, C sharp is sis, G sharp is gis, D sharp is dis, E sharp would be S, no it's not, it would be Es, Es, English, German, Es, right? Um, uh, did I say the right, A, oh I, I missed uh, A, A sharp would be uh, Ace, that one might might be a little bit weird because in German it's A, and, and uh, it's Ice, I'm not sure if they have a diphthong in there or not, so I think I would just say Ace, right, use an English there, um, E sharp would be Es, um, B sharp would be bis. Now, we're teaching kiddos. I can't. I've never sung bis to them yet. Okay, <laughs> I totally know this, uh, but that would be the sharps. All right, flats. All right, uh, what you do is you use uh, s or es. So, by the way, uh, sharps would be is fists. All right. So the flats would be uh, bess, and again. I know in German it's just plain B, but I, again, Jerlish here, right? So I, I sing Bess, S, Os. Now, I know you middle school people, I started to chuckle. I, I, I told this to a, a, a teacher friend of mine, and uh, he says, uh, get your Os in tunes? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say that in, in middle school, but yeah, Os, right? Os. Uh, maybe giggle and just get over it and move on, okay? So in German, because if you say Ace, then you're talking about... Sounds more like sharps. So flats, right? Os. Um, um, des would be D. Uh, let me see. Uh, B, A, D, G. Uh, guess, uh, Ses. And Fess. Again, when am I singing at flats? I'm not. So really, you just need to get to the three, maybe the fours uh, for most of this. So just encourage you to give that a try. We've really, really been enjoying it. It's been, been working great. I'm realizing there's a couple of things I kind of forgot I wanted to mention about rhythm. Uh, when it comes to rhythm, again, tools, uh, I love the Takadimi, but they actually have syllables for a quintuplet. A quintuplet. Now, let me tell you something. I'm not going to learn what that is. How often do I do a quintuplet anyway? And when I do, I, you know, I'm not going to memorize a whole new set for the once every two years I probably do a quintuplet. What I'm going to use is uh, a word, and that is hippopotamus. I love teaching hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, 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 right? Uh, some people like university. That's boring. Hippopotamus is a whole lot more foreign. So it would be ta, ta, hippopotamus, ta, 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 hippopotamus, ta. Uh, using words is very much a, a tool. Uh, <clears throat> this... Uh, Teacher friend of mine, I'm going to talk about him here in just a moment. He, I watched him teach. He says a uh, blueberry, blueberry, berry, blue, berry, blue, right? The eighth and two sixteenths, or the two sixteenths and an eighth, and he's using words. Kids love it. It's a tool. It works great. Not Nothing wrong with that. It was really working for him. Uh, and, by the way, he's, he's teaching literacy because he gets the kids to say it. They're experiencing this. 
and then they're they're playing on it, right? But then he would play the rhythm. He would say, is that Berry Blue or Blueberry? And they would answer. And uh, how cool was that? So there's that. Now, I also watched him on the very same day. Let's talk about notes for a little bit. Uh, he, was, he was using no names. Oh, I need to get my fiddle. So he, he's got the kiddos and he's got uh, D, E, uh, how was it? It was something like uh, D, 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 E, 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 La, 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 G, G. <laughs> when, it, when it got to this, right, he was doing, he, was, he literally said La. And I, I've been thinking about this for the last couple of years. And um, I watched him do that and I almost laughed out loud. Um, not because he was doing anything wrong. It's just that he's doing exact same thing that I've been struggling with for so long, but I found a way to fix it. And so I, I went up to him between classes. I was visiting his school and I said, I've got an answer for you. I said, first of all, thank you for doing note names. I think it makes so much more sense. And he's like, well, I like note names. I, I like note names too. And we're talking, I said, but there's a reason why you didn't say F sharp. And he's like, what? And um, I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. He said, well, no, I like to know. It was, it was passing period. It was just a couple of minutes. And I said, well, when you sing F sharp, it actually screws up the rhythm. And his, you know, he's like, oh, yeah. And I said, so what we've been doing, what I've been teaching, we've been doing is, is the German. Fizz, 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 G, G. And he just, he looked at me like, oh, I'm going to try that. So he puts it on the board. The Here's what's great about him. The very next class, they get in, he's singing D, D, E, E. He says, stop, I want to teach you something new. He says, this is the German. Fizz, 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 G. I, I was just beaming because it, 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 was, it was something that worked for him and uh, he liked it. And uh, <laughs> how great is that? So he figured this out. Now, all of this to say, think about what just happened right here. He had an experience... I helped him with an experience, and then we talked about the intellect. So his experience is, yes, he's able to sing the, sing the notes and do all of that, but he sort of had this issue, too. His workaround was just to sing law, and it was working for him. His kids play great, right? But just to be able to tweak it a little bit and say, well, let's think about this. Let, let's, you know, uh, use a German to represent F sharp. And, of course, once in a while you stop, you say, hey, kiddos, this is what? They all know it's F sharp. It's not that hard. It's just a different way of thinking about it. And so how fun was that? Really, really enjoyed my day with him. Okay, I want to talk to you about numbers versus uh, note names for just a moment. It's really, really important that you teach note names, and here's why. A number does not give you enough information. This is why I want to, this is why I avoid Solfege, because Solfege doesn't give me enough information either, to be honest with you. It's a whole nother system they would have to learn. So, and, and here's what I mean. A note name, F sharp, and a note name, F. Okay? F sharp and F tells a string player very specifically what they need to do. So we're just going to talk about, um, I forget my example. If I wrote out uh, uh, alto clef or treble, it doesn't matter, it's the same. Uh, you're just on a different string, you know, right? So F sharp. So you look at this example. So the kiddos are playing. And they come up to this F sharp, and they, you know, you teach them it's fifths, and they're learning fifths, fifths, D, E, fifths, G, fifths, E, and they're learning this after a while, and they just learn that space. The experience first is to learn to manipulate where my fingers go, okay, and, and to know, hey, well, if I'm if I'm flat, my string's a little bit long. If I'm sharp, my string's a little bit short. I've got to learn how to manipulate sound. It's so important. It's what good musicians do. We manipulate sound. We manipulate pitch. We manipulate rhythm. That's what we do. And allow them to do that. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's babbling. I'll talk about that in a minute. But they learn F sharp as a two. Um, don't teach them that it's a two. Teach them when they're in first position and when they're on their D string, they're going to use a two. This was very important. Uh, first the note name and then how to play it. If they simply learn it as a two, here's what happens. And you've all had this experience. This turns into this. And the kids are playing fifths when it should be F, F, right? Not fifths. It should be F. And then you're like, oh, kiddo. You say, sweetheart, that is wrong. You need to fix this. And you walk up to them and you put an arrow pointing down. Oh, says the kid, I've learned something. When my teacher comes up to me and puts a little arrow down on that too, that means I do this. 
they haven't really learned the difference between F sharp and F. Okay, they're, they're learning numbers and they're learning a tablature system. And then this is kind of what happens. Now, unfortunately, strings have been um, taken out of the schools in my particular area. So a lot of the music was given to the youth orchestra. And I was filtering through it one day and I saw this and maybe you had this experience too. I giggled. I, at first, I, th I just giggled and shook my head. And, and then I, I kind of shamed myself after that, realizing something very important. This is a student who wants to do well. Listen to me carefully. They want to do well. They don't want to be embarrassed. Most people don't want to be embarrassed, but especially a middle school kid. And this kiddo wants to participate. They want to play. But for whatever reason, note names was not stressed. And they didn't learn note names. Um, I don't know if their teacher taught numbers. And then they never were able to switch to, to letter names or note names. Okay, I don't know, I don't know the situation. All I know is this kid, kiddo came up with a tablature system that he or she thought works. And it, and it doesn't. It's really unfortunate. And on top of that, there's lots of mistakes in this. Right? So back to, the, back to this idea. A2 is not enough information. F sharp is a spot on my instrument right there. And when I see that as F sharp, that's the only place I can go. When I see F natural, that's the only place I can go. Now, I, some of you are thinking, there's two spots. There's one up here. Yes, you're right. I'm talking about sixth grade. Sixth graders. All right, hang with me. Sixth graders, they're going to learn this. And then they're going to learn this. And you need to teach them where those spots are. The truth is, it's not a two anyway. Because that F sharp can be played with a one. If you get really fancy and you got some, some crazy thing with lots of D sharps, that F sharp can be played with a three, can't it? So the number is not enough information. That spot is F sharp. And in this music and in this situation, we're going to use a two. And then when life changes and it becomes F natural, that's a spot. And in this situation, I'm playing my finger here. This is, again, super, super valuable that you teach note names and not numbers. Uh, to go back to something else that I said, we talked about a little bit about have the experience first and then go to the intellect. Thank you, Dr. Gordon. Yet once again, he helped us understand and really clarified for us the way we learn music is very much the, in the same that we learned a language. All right. One thing that I love what Dr. Suzuki said is, yeah, it's amazing. Every Japanese kid learn, learns Japanese. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> right? Uh, think about this. Every Japanese kid learn, learns language. It should be that every music student learns music. What does that mean? Kids need an opportunity to babble. You need an opportunity to babble. And unfortunately, we don't. Now, this is going to be controversial. I'm really sorry. I don't do, for me, I'm just talking about me. Just talking about me. There are plenty of wonderful teachers that use stickers. Totally get that. Totally, totally get that. For me, I don't like using stickers. To me, a sticker is an, another symbol. And they're not, they're not com fully learning where F sharp is. Their eyes are putting their finger on a spot. Okay, and I, I feel like they, they even just made me tune out a little bit. And you have to work extra hard to get them to listen. What if there were no stickers? And what if you gave them time to learn how to manipulate sound? And what if you're, they're supposed to be doing F sharp this, and they're they, this, and you walk up to them and you say, ah, you're a little bit flat. That is a flat sound. Can you fix it? Uh, you know, and, and they learn how to manipulate the pitch. Think about that. Uh, and I know it takes longer. Now, again, I work with uh, kids too. I know I don't have a class with 30 beginners. I totally get all of that. I still do this, all right, because I fully believe. I would rather the, it take longer for kids to figure this out than for them to go right to a sticker. I just, I just do. I feel like they learn it better. They, they learn what they're talking about. They learn what a sound is, and they just babble. Um, I think we've forgotten what babbling is, right? And, uh, babbling is this. So, uh, well, just watch. Uh, uh, 
Gugu. Orang teruk. Uh, that was my grandson many years ago. That's babbling. And first of all, I want you to know something. It's fun. Babbling is okay. It's fun. It looks like complete chaos in your classroom. I know that. You have a principal walk in there going, what are they doing? You say, oh, they're babbling. <laughs> what does that mean? We go, oh, they're learning a language. They're babbling. Allow them to have experiences of, of what that means and to learn how to find it. Okay, and, it, and not only is it fun, it is totally messy. <laughs> uh, kiddo, you know, wah, on, his own, on his own spit. That's, you know, it's messy. And yes, babbling is messy. But boy, the value of allowing kids to do this for some time um, far outweighs than the, the more immediate experiences of, of just being right on it. Okay, it, 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 it takes a while to figure this out. But in the long run, I just feel like kids learn better. They learn the whole story of what F sharp is, uh, or what E is, or what G is, rather than uh, rather than just going to a, a sticker and then forgetting about it. Okay. So again, uh, we all we all do things differently. I have just found that uh, this is working great for me. All right. So all of that said, take a look at this, and you might think, whoa. That's really some complicated stuff for a little sixth grader. I, I'm not thinking of this for sixth grade. Um, I'm thinking of this is just as an example of how to be teaching this. So the first thing I would do, I know 12 we don't do very often. I just wanted to experience some compound meter. Something we do not do enough of, right? Right? Yeah, we just don't. Uh, so in compound meter, it would be ta, 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 ki, da, ta, ta, ki, da, ta, 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 ki, da, ta, ta, ta ki da ta 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 so that that half note ta just kind of emphasize that again on another beat um and with a with the bow right if you took out the slurs it'd just be ta 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 ki da ta and then when they learn how to slur ta ta ki da ta right so just, you know, rhythm and bowing is so much together, but just learning how to do that, learning how to say it, and learning how to babble a little bit. All right? A D says B, 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 A, B, A, B, A, Fis, D, E, D, E, Fis, Fis, E, Fis, G, A, Fis, D. That would be an example of how I could hear that in my head and sing that with note names. Now, again, you're not going to do that with kids, right? You're going to teach them hot cross buns, right? Fis, E, D, E, Fis, E, D, Fis, E, D, right? And then eventually learn some other patterns. Fis, E, Fis, G, Fis, E, E, there's an E, right? And, and just learning how, how to sing just, just very short little things. You're giving them a vocabulary. This is, this is another way of thinking about this. When you sing one measure at a time, or you sing two or three, three intervals together, stepwise, uh, stepwise with one skip, maybe two skips, maybe learning the arpeggio or something along those lines, you're giving them a vocabulary. So they can eventually learn how to read something like this, which would be more like a sentence, right? And they're putting it all together. And so I'll do some more videos on this just to kind of give you some other thoughts about how to do that. But for right now, just in a basic sense, just remember, you're helping kids have an experience first, then help them with the intellect of it. So the experience first, learn how to manipulate sound, learn how to sing because that's more closely related to your ear, help them to, to hear stuff in their head to audiate really, really well. And then um, and you're going to find that kiddos are going to really latch on to being more musically literate. And again, isn't that our job? So hopefully I've given you some ideas and some things to think about. Uh, maybe you don't want to use any of it. That's okay. They're tools, right? These are tools that are working for me. I'm seeing really fun results in kids, more so than I did when I was a much younger teacher. Uh, maybe you just want to tweak a little bit, you know, or maybe you want to consider it, whatever. Um, again, it, we're, we're all doing uh, our job as best as we can, and I'm hoping that what you're using is working really, really well. 
But if you're saying, hmm, I'm not so sure it's working really, really well, I like to try it. Give it a try, right? Allow kids to manipulate sound. Give them opportunities to babble and figure stuff out by using their ear rather than their eyes, right? Have the experience, have the experience, and then move to the intellect. All right, so I uh, hope all of that helps. I hope you are um, got some things to think about, some things to try, and I will see you on the next video.